Okay, just to clarify, this is not a full review for the algebraic manipulation test. This is only going to be a couple problems, okay? But I'm going to record a few for the people that have been absent or whatever. Um, how do I start something like this? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I need two equations right away because I've already, quote, got the clump alone. See, if this had had like an 8 out here, I would need to get rid of that 8 and get this clump alone. But it's a really, really simple one. So the clump's already alone. Now I can split it in two. x plus 2 equals 7 and x plus 2 equals 7. Why did I make two identical equations? To make a point that one of them needs to change and be different. On the one on the right, you make it negative 7. Because what's underneath here could be 7 or negative 7. All right, now... Solve those two equations, you got your two answers. Turn them my way. Use the iPad and... All right, good, 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 good. Make, use the thicker pen, please. Good, uh, good, 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 good. Uh, you haven't actually got the two answers. There's two answers. And maybe you do, but it was sloppy. I couldn't read them. Good, 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 good. Okay, enough. I have adding or sorry, subtracting two from both sides. X equals five, and subtracting two from both sides. But more carefully over there, because it's negative seven minus a two makes negative nine. There's two answers. There we go. Now, what if I had changed this problem just in a little tiny way? I had made it a less than sign. Do you get that there'd be a much more complicated answer? Yes, ma'am. First, before that. All right, if there had been an 8 plus on the outside, all I would have done first, if this had been the problem, I would have subtracted 8 from both sides, then this would be gone, and then I'd have negative 1 over here, and then I would have written my two equations. Okay, yes, but a plus sign on the outside of anything, you could add a plus sign to the outside of anything, and it wouldn't be a problem. What you were saying is like this. Um... You're worried about that plus sign? There's a plus sign on the outside of every single thing that there ever is in math. So it doesn't matter. Okay, so back to what our actual problem was, was right here, and our actual right answer is 5 and negative 9. But if I change this to greater than, you now have a much more complicated problem. You start by solving it, then you go to the part where you make a number line. See if you can take it from there. Just change the problem by changing it to greater than, and see what the answer is now. And it definitely adds much more complicated. You gotta have a number line, you gotta shade the number line right, you gotta test intervals, you gotta make sure your answer is in interval notation, like you know, from nine to infinity or whatever it is. Yes, ma'am. That is supposed to be a greater than or equal to. That's a good question. I'll I'll put right over both parts. Greater than or equal to seven. And that definitely makes a difference, because if it's or equal to, then you should know something about shading the points. Okay, you should know, of course, that negative 9 and 5 are the two important points. Common mistakes people make, you got to have the negative 9 on the left because it's smaller. And the 5 is on the right because it's bigger. I circle these two spots, now do I fill in the circles? I look back at my sign. If this is an or equal to, then I fill them in. Last thing, I check regions. And usually if it works on the inside in here, then it won't work on the outside. Or if it works on the outsides like this, then it probably doesn't work in the middle. Now, which way is this one? Well, let's find out. Again, I'm not guaranteeing you that it's always going to work that way. In fact, we like to test for the exception to the rule. Like maybe we make it work in here and out here. But in this case, I think it's a simpler one. Now, how do I tell? I'm going to test something between that and that, which zero is my favorite number. If it's in the range, I want to test zero. Zero is one of the nicest things to test. Especially when the equations are complicated, zero works really nice. Does zero really work? Well, zero plus two is two. Absolute value of two is two. Is two greater than or equal to seven? 
No, it is not. So therefore, it does not work in here. So it's probably going to be the two outside ones. But I would just test both of them. Hey, if this is a test, I would, I would check it to death because that's where kids make mistakes. In fact, if you're getting a weird answer, like, you know, two things are shading that don't make sense to you, keep checking. Try different numbers. Make sure maybe you're making a mistake in the, in the interval checking process. Now I'm going to check a 6. 6 goes here. 6 plus 2 is 8. Absolute value of 8 is 8. 8 greater than 7? Yes, it is. It seemed to work there. So it works here. And just to be safe, I would check down here. Negative 10. Negative 10. Negative 10 plus 2. Negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. Absolute value of that is 8. 8 is greater than 7. Yes, it is. And it worked. Now, if I had come up with a weird answer, like only one of those ends worked, I would definitely double check it because, you know, normally it's not just one of the ends. It's both ends like this. So if you get a weird answer, triple check it because you know, sticking the numbers in the intervals is where everybody makes their mistakes. Final, final answer, negative infinity to negative 9. Bracket on the negative 9 because it can touch negative 9. Parenthesis around the infinity because you'll never get to infinity. Union with 5 to infinity, bracket on the 5, because it can touch at 5. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Questions? Yes, sir. That's wrong. You have to have every little thing right. Remember, though, it's horizontal graded, so you can have a mistake on the front and a mistake on the back and still get a straight A. You just can't have too many mistakes. That would be a mistake. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the question was, if it had worked like negative 9 here and 5, if it had worked, were you saying like here and here? Then you would want to just say, since it works from 9 on, you don't even need to acknowledge the 5. You just say negative 9 to infinity, bracket, parentheses. But remember, if you have a weird one like that, you double check it, you triple check it, because some that's unusual. Does it happen? Yeah, but it's unusual. Yes. If it had been all sec three sections, then it'd be negative infinity to positive infinity. And again, I would double check or triple check myself, make sure there's not something not wrong because it's unusual. Any other ones you want to ask about? Yes. Whenever you have an infinity, it always has a parenthesis, yes. All right. Now let's try one that's a little harder. This one is harder to get your zeros. This will be my last practice problem before this test. That does not mean I've covered everything, but this is another kind you have to be able to handle. It tests factoring. It tests solving. These are two of the things on my top 20 sheet. That's why I keep practicing those with you. If you're good at factoring, and then once you've got it factored, you're good at solving, then the only thing you have left is you got to make your number line and shade in the right spots. I want to pause while you work on that. Okay, here we go. See if you did this right. First of all, you factor it, two sets of parentheses. Then you have 2x and x. It's the only way you can make a 2x squared. If you're bad at factoring, watch this part close now. Now i got to put in a 3 and a 1. Do I know that they're there? No. They might be like this. I don't know until I check. And then the other thing is there's a plus and a minus. Plus and a minus. And I don't know if they're that way or if they're this way. I don't know. I keep checking. How do I check? My first outside, inside, last. The first I already checked. That's this and this. Make that. Okay, I'm already made sure that that was right. Next, it's the last. That and that make that. And again, I've got a negative 3 and a positive 1, so I'm good on that. Then it's all about the outside and the inside. And I did that slightly wrong. The inside is these two. Okay, there we go. So now it's negative 3x and positive 2x. That doesn't make negative 5. In fact, it's way off. That means I should switch the numbers, not the signs. Okay, now, outside and inside. That's positive 6x and negative x. That makes positive 5x. That's really close. It's just the opposite. So then I switch the signs around. There we go. That's how you do it. Now I've got my equation factored. And 
I'm going to now solve for the two things. x minus 3 equals 0. x equals 3 is one of the spots on the number line then. 2x plus 1 equals 0. 2x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1 half. That one and that one are my two things on my number line. So then I have a negative a half, positive 3. They both work. True or false? False. Because this did not have an or equal to sign. So they both don't work. They both have empty spots. Empty spot here, empty spot there. Now I should test around them. I'm going to test my favorite thing, zero. So I put in a zero, and look, if I go back to the original one, zero and zero cancels all that out. Do you get how negative three is less than zero is a true statement? So it worked. Now some of you are like, but I was using this other thing. As long as you factored it right, it's okay. You can put a zero in here and a zero in here, and that'll work. This makes a two plus, sorry, two times zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. That makes a 1 times a negative 3. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 1 times negative 3 makes negative 3. See, that would have also given me negative 3. So you can test it in either one of those equations. And either way, it comes out to negative 3 is less than 0, which is true. Now, I'm probably done. But if I want to be extra careful, I would check and see, does 4 really not work? Because I assume it does not work. How do I tell? I go back to this equation, and personally, I like putting it in the factored one better. So I go, a 4 goes in here, and a 4 goes in here, and this will be 8 plus 1 is 9 times 4 minus 3 is 1. 9 times 1 is 9. Is 9 less than 0? Nope, it's not. So that area does not work, and it's pretty darn likely this other area does not work either. I'm just going to check it. I'm going to stick in a negative 2, show you how it doesn't take very much time to check. Negative 2 going in, and I get negative 2 times 2 is negative. 4 plus 1 is negative 3 times. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative times negative makes it positive. 15 is less than 0. A positive 15 is less than 0. That's not true. doesn't work. All it would take, though, is for a kid right there to make a dumb mistake and think, oh, wait, it worked. And now they're going to shade this area, and they're going to think, oh, it must be true that it works in there. Do you get how I had to do a whole bunch of stuff with negatives and make one little mistake? It's going to seem like I'm right. All right, so how do you do that? You, if it's ever weird like this, especially, I double check. And try like negative 3 and make sure you don't make any mistakes because now you're like really paranoid that something's wrong here. You stick in a negative 3. This will be 2 times negative 3 plus 1. And that makes negative 6 plus 1 makes uh, negative 5 times, now I'm going to stick in a negative 3 here. That makes negative 3 minus 3 makes negative 6. Negative times, times negative 6 makes positive 30. Is 30 less than 0? No. 30 isn't less than 0. It doesn't work here after all. So I double-checked it, and I saved myself. That's going to happen to some of you if you will take the time to double-check, because you will screw up your intervals. Be careful. That's from a lot of grading a lot of these tests. Everybody gets this number right and this number right. Pretty much everybody either fills them in or doesn't fill them in, and they do that right. It's the testing of intervals. Be careful when you're testing them. Okay. And that's all I have for you for the advice for the test tomorrow on algebraic manipulation. There's a lot more stuff on there. Make sure you do your review packet. Check it with the answers provided.